Winter was always the worst time in that city. In autumn, the trees along suburban roads were venerable but elegant. In winter, they were gnarled and ragged ancients with rheumatic knuckles and bones. The large houses became drafty and tired to heat. The young children on their way to Miss Tyler's ballet and dancing class in Moldworth Hall wore garters over thick stockings and top coats over jerseys and shawls, so that when they alighted from trams and cabs, they were recognisable because of their enormous size. In the mornings just at breakfast hour, the poor searched diligently in the ash bins of the well-to-do for half-born cinders and carried sacks and cans so that as much as possible of the fuel might be salvaged. The Ashbin children were pinched and wiry and usually barefooted. They lived on the cast-offs. They came each morning from the crowded rooms in the cast-off houses of the rich, elegant Georgian buildings which had grown old and had been discarded. The clothes they wore had been cast off by their parents who had bought them as cast-offs in the second-hand shops in Little Mary Street or Wine Tavern Street. If the well-to-do had stopped casting off for even a little while, the children would have gone homeless and fireless and naked. But nobody really thought about that. These things were. Fitz heard Larkin again that night and wondered at the magnetism of the man as the crowd cheered and the flares of the torchbearers tossed about the platform painting shadows on hungry faces that peered under peaked caps. Most of them had empty pockets, bare rooms to return to, bread and tea to kill hunger with, and no assurance of strike pay or any kind of relief. Yet they cheered when he said he could promise them nothing except hardship, and felt that somewhere at the end of the road, there was a better world waiting. Like heaven, it was very far away, and like heaven, it would be very hard to reach. Yet where before the only certainty had been obscurity and want, now at least there was that hint of hope. Hope for what? Fitz, in the calm after the speech making, could not quite remember. He could only remember that it had been there, that it had infected him in company with thousands of others crushing and jostling and listening. Perhaps it was a feeling of movement that remained a journey beginning, a vague but certain purpose.